Hello, this is Dr. Mintz. I want to discuss this case of a patient who came in with shortness of breath and cough. He was suspected of possibly having pulmonary embolism, so what was done was a pulmonary embolism protocol. Fortunately, pulmonary embolism protocol, our uh, protocol CTs, are able to demonstrate just about everything. It's overkill for many things in terms of the amount of imaging that's done and the slice thickness, but it still works well to, to define any kind of abnormality that might be in the chest. Okay, so here we have a study that shows no pulmonary embolism. And just so you know, you, you have to look for the main pulmonary artery and the right side of the heart is more anterior than the left side. So the right pulmonary outflow tract is right behind the sternum or somewhat behind the sternum. And the main pulmonary artery dives backward under the aortic arch and where they, where they are meeting here, it, uh, it's the AP angle, the aortical pulmonary angle. And in this area, we have a mass, a soft tissue mass that extends out into the left hilar region. We can see that one of the pulmonary arteries, the left upper lobe pulmonary artery, is partially enveloped by this tumor, sparing only portions of the perimeter of the left upper lobe pulmonary artery. And you can also see that there are little tiny nodules, little tiny soft tissue opacities here. Here's one there. And, you know, probably three here. These are enlarged nodes, only mildly enlarged, but still, given this large tumor there, very suspicious for metastatic disease. And now going to the axials, you can see that the mass abuts the aortic arch on its left side. This is prevascular space that's occupied by the soft tissue. Some of the soft tissue mass, some of this mass extends inferior to the aortic arch, where it also abuts the proximal left main stem bronchus and even encroaches slightly upon the carina level of the carina, which is where the trachea bifurcates. Here is the arch of the azagous vein. That's my favorite vein, by the way. The azagous vein does some very cool things. See, but it comes up from the abdomen. Here it is here. <clears throat> so you follow that little dot there. The arch of the azagous vein, it hooks up over the right main stem bronchus and joins the SBC. Uh, so this is a soft tissue mass. It's about seven centimeters diameter, five by seven, something like that. And of course, if you're reading a case like this or reading it with someone, always good to get some kind of official measurement. There's 7.7. .7. And it doesn't have to be exactly precise because it's hard to be very precise. It's an irregular mass. So about seven about seven by eight centimeters and then you have to have a length too to have a complete measurement. So you see how it extends and it is enveloping the left main pulmonary artery which is impressed upon, compromised. Okay, so you have the primary tumor mass here and it looks like we saw something on the coronal images that looked like little nodules like metastatic nodules and I think there's one right there there and this one right here doesn't belong there You get the idea. So there are a few small nodules there that look like they could be metastatic nodules from the mass, or they could be mildly enlarged lymph nodes, 
which could also be related to the, the mass. Okay, so that looks typical for a primary bronchogenic carcinoma. It's going to be difficult not only because of its size, but because it's enveloping the left main pulmonary artery and it's extending in the precarinal space. It's, it's abutting a large portion of the proximal left main stem. So it would be very hard to get this mass out without endangering the left main pulmonary artery and the left main stem bronchus. Plus, you can't get those little nodes out very easily. So this is, this is a difficult case uh, of bronchogenic carcinoma, primary bronchogenic carcinoma. Okay, so here we also have a little interesting anatomy. Here you have the right cruise of the diaphragm and the left cruise of the diaphragm, and the distance between these crura, C-R-U-R-A, the plural, is allowing some of the stomach to slide up through there. So that's like a, a hiatal hernia. Uh, it's not herniated at this moment, but I'm sure the stomach, the proximal stomach slides up and down between those crura and forms a at least small hiatal hernia from time to time. And elsewhere, you look in the liver because the liver is a common place for lung metastases. And we would have included an abdomen had we known that this patient had a lung mass, or very often would have, just to make sure that there aren't any hepatic metastases, which are common with liver tumors. Axillary regions look okay. Great vessels, uh, besides being affected by uh, and contiguous with this tumor, the aorta specifically, and the left main pulmonary artery, everything else seems to be uh, okay. No bone mats that I was able to see. So there you have it, primary bronchogenic carcinoma coming in and mimicking the symptoms of a pulmonary embolism. But doing a pulmonary embolism, CT was able to demonstrate the true etiology of the symptoms.